GitHub has recently released a preview of their new tool called Copilot that automatically suggests code when you're writing an application. Now there's a lot of controversy in the software engineering world about whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, but in this video, we're gonna talk about what that means for those of us who work in DevOps. So put your seat belts in the upright and locked position, fasten your tray table securely across your lap because we're about to find out. Looks like I picked the wrong week to stop sniffing glue. Hey, what's up? I'm Will from DevOps for Developers, and we're talking about all things DevOps on this channel, from getting your first job to implementing DevOps across your organization. And in this video, we're talking about what the GitHub Copilot means for those of us who work in DevOps. So let's talk about some of the challenges for this. Like one of the first challenges that I've heard discussed is people wondering if this is gonna put them out of a job. Now we've already talked about that on this channel, specifically in the video, is serverless killing DevOps? So check out that video if you're curious about my thoughts on that, because it's really the same conversation. We're just swapping out one term for another. The other thing that is going on here is a lot of people are concerned that GitHub and Microsoft, because they own GitHub, are reading your code and using that to build this AI library that uh, makes recommendations for better code. So here's the thing about that. You gotta assume that if you give your data or your code to a third party, you just have to assume that it's already public knowledge, right? Because even if the third party that you give it to is not reading that data for their own purposes, it's only a matter of time before they get hacked and then someone else has your data and puts it for sale or uses it against you on the internet. Now that's not to say you shouldn't use those services, right? Because you can't get in this scenario where you're like, oh, I'm just gonna keep it all myself. Because you're gonna get hacked too, right? There's no scenario where you're not gonna get hacked. The only thing you can do is minimize the footprint and have a plan in place for when it does happen. Surely you don't expect me to deploy some code that someone just got suggested to them from the internet. I can, and don't call me Shirley. How soon can you deploy? I can't be sure. Can't you take a guess? Not for two hours. You can't take a guess for another two hours? So I'm not gonna give you a demo of GitHub or Copilot in this video because there's a bunch of videos already doing that. And on top of that, it's in a preview mode, it's beta. So it's probably gonna change before I could get this video published to YouTube anyway. And our main focus on this video is wondering what the impact is to DevOps. So if this works out like it's designed to, it's gonna make it easier for software engineers to build applications because it's gonna help them solve a lot of common routine problems that suggest that there's already solutions for. That's gonna result in them building applications faster, creating more applications, and they're gonna to want to deploy those faster. So in a nutshell, this whole co-pilot thing for DevOps can just be spelled opportunity. It's gonna create more work for us because there's gonna be more deploys, more applications, shorter cycles for delivery time. And that's a good thing for us because it's kind of our job, like our main focus is making it easy for developers and software engineers to safely and securely get their code from their desktop into production. And we do that by putting guardrails in place to keep them from wandering off course into places that they shouldn't be. Now, it's not like this is a brand new concept, you know, of getting code from somewhere else to use in your application. I'm sure you've been to Stack Overflow and there's probably a pretty high likelihood that you might have copied something you found off of Stack Overflow and pasted it into your own applications. That's not the only source though. Think about every time if you're using Node.js that you NPM install a library from someone. Or if you're using a SaaS, a third party SaaS, and they have an integration library to work with their product. You know, it's pretty routine in this day and age for us to get code from someone else. The only thing that Copilot is doing is just increasing the footprint of the places we can get code from. Now a challenge that that introduces for us is we've got to build taller guardrails or higher guardrails for our developers and our software engineers to make sure that they don't wander off course, right? So that means things like in our CI CD pipeline, we need to make sure that we have an automatic linter in there that can fail a build. We've got to have 
test a test suite that runs in there and you got to have a certain amount of code coverage or test coverage for that build to pass. You also need to be doing security scans, you know, scanning not only the code that they write or that they get from Copilot to check for known security vulnerabilities, but also when you build that into a Docker image, you know, run a security scan against that Docker image to look for anything that can be identified there as well. And it all comes down to this process of just building and monitoring applications so that we can minimize the risk of anything that goes on and identify it early enough to resolve it before it goes into production. Now, one of the other things you need to focus on is your monitoring, your alerting, and your logging, right? Now, a lot of that comes from the developers themselves, but you gotta put the right tools in place so that they know, first of all, what the tools are, second, how to use them, and third, that um, you know there's some kind of a a fallback or a fail-safe mechanism in there to identify when those those areas fall into a deficient status. It's going to be really important in this environment to make sure that you have the monitoring and the alerting set up so that if a bad deploy goes out, your monitoring system can identify the bad performance. It's going to trigger an alert and then that alert can either roll back a deploy if there was a recent deploy or it has access to your paging system so that it can page the on-call developer and they can jump in and start to take a look at this. If you're not familiar with that, I've got a video on how to handle outages and I've got another one on logging and monitoring. And I'll link both of those in, uh, in the video here wherever the little card happens to pop up at. But really, in a nutshell, Copilot is a huge opportunity for us in DevOps because it gives us a chance to really step in front of this. You know, with serverless, we've kind of been dealing with this for a while, so we know what automated environments look like, and now we're just automating the code for it, so we kind of have an idea of what to expect. And as your organization starts to go down this path, you know, you can use this as an opportunity to increase your code coverage and build a tighter CI/CD pipeline and make sure that your logging, alerting, and monitoring are up to standards and use this as leverage to bring them up to standards if there's an area for improvement there. So, hope that was helpful for you. If you liked it, click the like video. If you wanna check out more, check out all of my other videos and I'll link a playlist here for you that's got some relevant courses or relevant videos in it. And um, I'll see y'all next time. The automatic pilot's deflating. Uh, no, we're not going to finish that joke. <laughs>